I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Home Scientist video series brought to you by Makershed. In this series, we'll perform hands-on demonstrations of numerous laboratory activities in chemistry, forensics, biology, earth science, physics, and the other sciences. Before we get started, full disclosure, I'm the curator of the Makershed Science Room and Make pays my salary. In these videos, we'll often use products that are available from Makershed, but the main purpose of this series isn't to sell Makershed products. We really don't care if you buy your home science gear from Makershed or from another vendor. Our goal is to encourage a renaissance of hands-on home science for everyone from elementary school kids to adult do-it-yourself science enthusiasts. Speaking of kids, it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Many of the experiments we'll do in this series use hazardous chemicals, flame, or other hazards. These experiments should be done only by or under the close supervision of a qualified adult. Incidentally, while I know a fair bit about science, I don't know much about shooting or editing videos, so I'll apologize in advance for any unevenness or glitches in these videos. I'll do the best I can, but the focus will be on the science rather than on video production quality. It's traditional to start out a series of home science videos with a tour of the lab, so that's where I'll begin. As you'll see, my own home lab is a lot more elaborate than most home labs. It used to be the kitchen in our downstairs guest suite, but now I've claimed it permanently for my own. Fortunately, my wife has a sense of humor about these things. First and most obvious is the shelving on the end wall, which holds scores of bottles of bench solutions, indicators, test reagents, and similar solutions. If I need, for example, 1 milliliter of 1 molar cobalt chloride solution, or 10 milliliters of 1 molar nitric acid, or 2 drops of Dragendorf's reagent, I don't have to make it up on the fly. It's right there waiting to be used. That saves a massive amount of time during lab sessions. Speaking of chemicals, here's one of several cabinets devoted to chemical storage. I store small amounts, up to maybe 100 grams or milliliters, of relatively unreactive chemicals together, arranged by name. More reactive or toxic chemicals, strong oxidizers, strong acids and bases, severe toxins, and so on, are segregated by type. I don't keep chemicals in locked cabinets because only adults have access to my lab. If there were children that might gain access, I'd install locks on all of the chemical cabinets. Here's one of several cabinets devoted to glassware and other lab equipment. I keep dozens of flasks, beakers, pipettes, graduated cylinders, and other glassware in various types and sizes. That's more than I really need, but having lots of clean glassware avoids having to stop to wash up during a lab session. Small items are stored in drawers using standard kitchen drawer dividers to keep things organized. All of the cabinets and drawers are labeled with a letter that links to my printed lab inventory sheets. Otherwise, I'd never be able to find anything. I do most of my messy work here under the exhaust hood. I seldom use the stove burner, so I've covered them with a sheet of plywood to absorb chemical spills. At some point, I'll probably box in this area to make a real fume hood, but the exhaust fan draws sufficient air to work well without being enclosed. I devote this small area to weighing operations and keeping my lab notebook. The cabinet above this area stores weighing papers, weighing boats, spatulas, standard weights, and so on. Here's the most recent change to my lab. It's an old microwave cabinet with a microwave oven and convection oven that we weren't using, but were too good to throw away. I used the microwave for heating water or solutions quickly. I used the convection oven as a drying oven for which it's ideally suited. There's also a drawer, another of which is always welcome, and a cabinet underneath that I use for storing bulk acids. So, this has been a quick tour of my home lab. I hope you've gotten some ideas from it. Once again, my home lab is a lot more elaborate than most home labs, so don't think you need a similar setup to do home science. You don't. All you need is a corner or a bench for a work surface and the desire to get some science done.